So in order to really, I think, give you an understanding of the tool, I want to make sure that everyone has a basic idea of what data mining is. Because I know there are a lot of some students in the room who may not be familiar. So, you know, I teach every day, so there's got to be audience participation. What is data mining? Looking for trends in data. Trends in, for predictive purposes, usually. Exactly. Okay. So, Dave's a good guy. Dave, what would happen if I took your computer <laughs> and threw it against the, the mirror? Jar, if I need a new one. Okay. <laughs> I think he wants you to do that. <laughs> okay. Have you ever done that? Throwing a computer against the wall? Yeah. On uh, a calculator. Okay, so how do you know he'd buy you a new one? Because he promised. <laughs> so you've never actually thrown a computer against a mirror to actually know definitively that he would buy you a new one if that happened. No, that's true. So you're using it based upon things you've seen happen that were similar events to make an assumption about what would happen in that instance. Basing it on experience with trusting JR. I need stuff, JR gets it done, so I have a pattern of trusting JR. So if it's gone, it will probably hook me up again. That is what we like to call human data mining. People do it on a daily basis. You use previous instances and things you've seen to try to predict what's going to happen in the future. Now, we do it with small amounts of information on a daily basis, things we've seen. That guy has the blinker on in his car. I know he's probably going to turn at some point unless he just really for, doesn't understand what that sound means. And we've all driven behind that person who's had their blinker on for four miles. Okay. But what if you're an engineering firm who has to run 10,000 instances to try to find the patterns to see where the anomalies are? What if you're a health practitioner who wants, to who wants to know where the best place to put your resources are? What, t what hours of the day to have so many nurses on your, sh on your shifting fields? What if you're an educator who want to know which students you should watch more closely during your semester? To start out with an idea based upon a certain number of characteristics your students have. To know how they might do before your semester even gets. It's a little bit harder for us to do that because we're running so many lines of code. Now, our brains are naturally hardwired to it, and now we have software programs that are actually designed to do this as well. So, one of the big for profit guys in this building is, in this field, is SAS. And I really like their definition of what data mining is okay. it's the process of finding anomalies, patterns, and correlations within large data sets to predict outcomes. So using a broad range of techniques, you can use this information to increase revenues, cut costs, improve consumer relations, reduce risks, and so much more. So when you use data mining, there's really a, a limitless number of applications. Now that's why some, JR actually brought me in, because I've only ever used it from an end user standpoint. Could you actually go into the software I'm going to use you? Code with R, code with Python, absolutely. I've never done that because I've never really had to. The software actually is set to run, so all you really need is 20 minutes of introduction, if even, and you're set to go. Which is why I like using this particular piece of software for students. Additionally, you can use it even easier because you can get a free educational license to use it which for students on a budget, because we all want them to do their homework. For students on a budget, that little keyword of free is really nice. Now, small caveat, they're going to be limited to a, you know, a certain number of instances. But don't worry, that number is 10,000. Okay. So how is this different than some other things you've seen? Well, you can run decision trees in Excel. We've all done that. This actually takes it to this next level. Not only can you run one decision tree, you can actually run what's known as a random forest, which runs 10 decision trees simultaneously, trying to check itself. You can actually run a whole host of anomaly search functions. And this really tries to actually have 
limiting factors built in so you don't run into that overfitting problem of your data. I've run into a lot of, I don't want to use the older word, older generations, but some professors who really try to push back on me against teaching this. Stick with linear regressions. It's a better form. Well, yes and no. Linear regressions are great for research. You get a nice predictive analysis. However, what they take your data it to do is they force it into a line to fit that linear regression. It's not really your data. Data mining, on the other hand, does take your data as true data and then just find the patterns. Okay. A little bit different perspective, but some people find it a lot better. Now, JR did ask me to actually collaborate with him on, a pro on this project to try and develop a course for students. Data mining and some of these more predictive analytics is becoming a very big field. So we're going to actually focus not just on this one piece of software, but on another one called Tableau, which also focuses on data visualization. So not just how do you deal with these massive amounts of data, how do you actually analyze and interpret that data, but then how do you actually accurately show it to someone else? Because in this age of um, having everything out on the internet, having everything very publicly transparent for businesses, even from engineering firms to hospitals, you want to be able to accurately and easily give that inf transmit that information to somebody else who may not have any background in what you're doing so they can understand what that is. So JR and I, and as well as the wonderful photographer back there, Ilma, yeah. <laughs> are actually working on this. Now she's going to be very helpful in giving us the student's perspective to make sure the labs and things we create She's going to help us create those actually make sense to a student. So together we make up both kind of halves of the equation. The developer side and the end user applica practical application side. So we do want to take a multidisciplinary approach. Because more and more people are trying to actually have to hire consultants to do this stuff because they don't have anyone in-house. Uh, most recently, while I was in my graduate work, I was actually hired by an engineering firm who made a very specific, tiny type of crystal. I had no idea what their crystal could do. I actually had to learn a lot about the physics behind crystals and sound, wavelength, and the fact that it could be used in bombs and all that kind of stuff. But they didn't have anyone there, despite the high level of detail, you know, people they had, to actually, who could actually do these things. GE was sending a lot of people into our programs, their, their engineers, to try to learn these because they didn't have anybody. So if we can give these students even just one class in this, it's going to give them a slight edge amongst their competition. Even though, you know, the employment rate just dropped to 4.3% yesterday, it's still a tough job environment out there. So we will be using open source and publicly available data sets. Why? Because not only is it about getting this information to students, it's about showing them what's out there as well. So you don't necessarily have to recreate the wheel just to find an answer all the time. We're going to be using crime statistics. We're going to be using health statistics, education statistics, and if the university cooperates, our own statistics. To try to get some usable information to say, okay, where can we better allocate our resources to get more predictive with student outreach? So again, we're going to be spanning all the different types of data mining from anomaly detection, clustering, decision trees, random forest. And we're going to be looking at interpretation of that data, making sure they can actually not just find it, but then know what it really means to take that data and transmit it to our practical application. And of course, data visualization. So just to give you a, a brief view of some of the things RapidMiner does, and to kind of, I was worried, you know, we're worried about some of the having to switch a computer and the server's not working. So I just I ran these and just used some screenshots. So when you open up RapidMiner, and again, I think everyone here is affiliated with the university. You can actually go and download it for free. This yes. is confidential information? No, it's not. This is, yeah, just this is fabricated. <laughs> so I did take real student data and then adjust it slightly so it was, wasn't close to my actual students. This was three combined sections of 150. 
you can see the basic grade information of, you know, I give them extra credit, participation, their major papers, homework, and then exams. Trying to see where are the make or break points for my students. A lot of students all say, I gotta get 100 points, you know, I gotta work on these exams, I gotta start for the exams. Is that really the make or break point for them in my class? So when you open it up, you're probably gonna wanna add some data. Works through a typical browser function. Then you're gonna get something like this, because it's gonna ask you to select the cells to import. Now you can select all, you can select few, but you can't, all the cells have to be touching. It's a little picky about that. Once you do that, you can actually format it. So you can actually make sure it's interpreting it in the real way. Okay? Integers, real numbers, okay, polynomial, uh, nominals, and then you can actually do what's set a role. You can tell what you want it to predict and what you want it to label based upon by clicking on the little gears. When you advance beyond that, you're going to get a screen that looks about like this, which is really fabulous. I already have some operators in here, and this is how you actually program things in. It's a lot easier than having all those lines of code, because it's actually going to recommend you can find your operators here, that's what they call these things, but it's actually going to recommend things to you. It's going to say, hey, based upon all the other people who have done things like this before, here's what's most likely going to be your next step, because it data mines itself. But then if you have a process you've never seen before, you're not sure what it does, You've got this little window right here, which gives you an exact descriptor of what it does, how to use it. Okay? It has a basic education tool built in on itself, which makes it great for teaching students. Yes? Is this just a trial version of the software? You, it is, this effectively runs. I've had my free What's education the license. size limits on the data? 10,000. Okay. 10,000 lines. But I've been running, in terms of, you don't get a free education license for only one semester, I've been running mine for a couple of years. Okay, I got it when I was in grad school, I still have the same, same license. They love it for educational purposes. They love getting other people in, they're wonderful about education. You actually go to their website, you can live chat with professionals. Because they love helping people to learn more about it. Because I have sets of data, about 500,000 free files. 500,000 records that uh, I'd have to buy, I guess. That you would have to buy, yeah. You are limited. And I have actually tried it um, to see if maybe you can, there are sneaky ways around it. I downloaded a Medicare file. You can get free access from the government on how much, what Medicare claims are. So I did download that data set and try to do it to see if more, you know, by the patterns by states. The decision tree got huge, just even when I pared it down to a couple hundred, so I didn't use that one to show you, so I went with the grade example because it's a lot cleaner. For the PSU folks, it's uh, Hershey, mm -hmm. data, uh, Hershey Medical yeah. Center data on uh, numbers of um, radiology stuff. You would probably have to go with, you can work with them and actually request a lower level, a lower price one, because they are very easy to work with. They're a great company, like I said, if you go and have quite, if you just jump on their website, a little golden retriever is going to pop up because that's always the avatar. <laughs> For the developer, it's going to ask you, hey, what brings you here? Do you have questions? And there's always someone there to answer those questions any time of day. They've got videos that actually show you how to use it. If you want to take it to the next level and you've got an extra three grand lying around, you can actually get a certificate in data binding to use how to use the code and, everything. and like pretty much everything. They'll send you to a week-long boot camp with the people who actually designed the software. Um, so what happens when it actually, you actually print out, so this is actually just part of the final decision tree, but it actually told me that, well, these unit assessments, these papers, were actually the first big make or break point for the students. Okay? So if they wanted to get a good grade, they needed to get at least a 67% on those papers. Pretty interesting. There's a lot of students meant to say, gotta get work on those exams. Okay. So that's just a really brief introduction, because I know we're limited on time, of what this tool can do. And like I said, it's useful in just about any field. We're looking at a multidisciplinary approach, labs for multidisciplinary approaches. 
but it's going to be a really cool experience for students. You know, you Ilva will tell us. That's right. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Yes. Any questions? Yes. Is your education cost when you purchase it? Say again? Education cost. Educational cost. Um, the educational price is just free. I know they have, what you, you can contact them and work it out if you need a larger section, but you're in an institutional. They do have tiered pricing levels. I don't know all the pricing levels off the top of my head. I'm looking at the free stuff right now. There's a free version that anybody can get. You can apply for an educational license if you're just working on a project, whatever. It's good for three months, but they'll renew that if you ask, and that version has an unlimited data. What's the cost? Nothing. 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 N
that section of the lab as a piece of code which is executable within the environment. So let's see if we can actually run the code. Hopefully no error. So can you click on the button, I guess? That's more intuitive. Yeah, so could keep going down and maybe the one with the output, I guess that's more obvious. So I guess we still have a little bit of glitch, but if it was working, basically you'll see the outputs and all that. So that's what's kind of nice about uh, the lab, and you can develop an entire lab just using this tool. So uh, we're still kind of learning more about this tool. We just set it up actually a week ago, so that's one of the reasons probably why we're stumbling a little bit. Right now it's running, yeah, so he's actually entering the input. So what is going on right now is the program is asking for a user input, so he was actually entering the user input over there. And then the code ran and it shows the results pretty much. So this is the piece where we're using the Python, uh, not Python, but Weka API to do some of the uh, prediction related tasks. And then you see the very similar results you saw in the actual Weka tool as an output over there. So it shows the accuracy of 96.6667, so it actually use the particular machine learning algorithm to produce the result. So the difference here is you just use the API, you weren't using actually the graphical user interface. We can talk to Weka directly without going through the uh, user interface. So this is a very powerful tool when it works, so we will we'll fix it. <laughs> All the glitches.